Did you guys notice that Yoda is the only character we know in this entire trailer? It's like creepy Voldemort's drumming, shot of unknown planet, random marketplace, Yoda in the council chambers on Cruise. Hi, hey, how you doing, Yoda? Back to Voldemort's drumming, naked protocol droid, eclipse. Ah. I'm still confused. Welcome to another episode of 50 Insane Details, a series where I find details, Easter eggs, and state the obvious about Star Wars games and other topics. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the new Star Wars Eclipse trailer and point out a bunch of details you probably missed, but also very likely noticed. And if you do notice something I don't, or if I get something wrong, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> Alright, our grey friend here is about to play a drum in this dark room. The drum itself is actually resting on what looks like a tree stump. More shots of the branches are revealed later in the trailer, so this guy is in some kind of, you know, old foresty kind of place. In the next shot, we see the beginning of an eclipse, or rather, a solar eclipse which is when the moon covers the sun. More specifically, this is what's called an annular solar eclipse, where the edge of the sun can still be seen around the moon. You got the full eclipse, you got the half eclipse, but this one's the annular. Next, we see a shot of a human eye looking directly at the solar eclipse. And when I saw this, I was like, wait, hang on. Isn't that like extremely bad for your eyesight? It is extremely dangerous to look directly at the sun even during a solar eclipse. So unless this person somehow has sunproof eyes, she's about to go blind. <laughs> This shot here shows a ship hurtling towards a planet, coming in for a crash landing. By my count, 11 pieces go flying off this ship during this shot. My question is, how has the hull not yet been breached? Not to worry, we are still flying half a ship. The left engine also powers down and fails. Now, what is this star system? Look familiar? Well, it's very possible this is a new location altogether, but seeing as though lots of this game will be set in the Outer Rim, to me, this looks a lot like the Yavin system. Look, we got the big orange gas giant Yavin Prime. Up the back, this honestly looks a lot like Yavin 4. And this one at the bottom is possibly one of Yavin's other 26 or so moons. Very popular place to be, Yavin. All the moons gather around. All right, next up, we see a city which looks a heck of a lot like Naboo, but is definitely not Naboo. See the river down here? This area looks like where Padme and Anakin went for a walk that one time. Perched on the rooftops of the city are one, two, three guards holding staffs dressed in blue robes. At first glance, they reminded me of the Senate guards who also wear blue and carry a staff, but I think they're a little more feathery than these guys here on the rooftops. The ship up the top here looks a lot like an AA-9 freighter. You might've seen one of those on Coruscant in Attack of the Clones. You also notice the freighter is hooked up to this tower along with this other ship on the left. It's like they're getting refueled, getting some gas in there. Now during this shot, we also see these small starfighters fly past. And these also appear again later in the trailer. As far as I can tell, these are new. They've never appeared before in Star Wars, but at first I was like, oh, hey, it's Sam Wessel speeder. Literally looks nothing like it. But I'll talk about why these speeders are actually important in a bit. Next shot, we've got a guy carrying two baskets over his shoulder, filled with little green space monkeys. Space monkeys have three eyes. As far as I know, these are also new to Star Wars. They're like much, much cuter versions of our friend Salacious B. Crumb, the sleaziest little space monkey you'll ever meet. To the left of the monkeys is a Rodian. He also looks kind of old and is wearing a red brown robe. Is he a Jedi? These three aliens in the background I've never seen before. Have you? Let me know. This here is a Mon Calamari and he's also wearing similar robes to the Rodian. Now the Jedi's robes from this era were a bit different to those from the prequels. I'm not saying these are Jedi robes, but the prequel robes were basically just modeled on Ben Kenobi's Tatooine outfit. All right, guys in the costume department, listen up. Old man Ben Kenobi didn't dress like this because he's a Jedi. He dressed like this because he was a monk living in isolation on a desert planet. He needed these robes for the desert to survive and to live like a monk. These kinds of things bug you like they do me. Oh, guys, all Jedi dress like they live in the desert. No, it's just Ben Kenobi in the desert with a cloak on to protect his poor... English skin from the sun. Also, over Mon Calamari's right shoulder, we get a better look at one of those blue guards from earlier. Definitely not the Senate guards. Significant lack of feathers. He needs to get himself some, huh? Over Mon Cala's other shoulder is another Rodian. This one is more orange-red in color. Very diverse planet we have here. I've also heard some people talking about how this place could be Jeddah from Rogue One. I mean, it kind of also looks like Batu from Galaxy's Edge. Who knows? Maybe it's the Naboo planet we saw before. Maybe it's, you know, a Coruscant underworld, underground, you never know. <laughs> so it appears the Mon Cala is taking a look at this samurai guy. Guys, it's Ronin from Star Wars Visions. Surrounding our mysterious samurai friend are a bunch of fruit baskets, and these are filled with what looks like 
Mularoon fruit. Popular fruit in the Star Wars galaxy. Yes, there is Star Wars fruit. Mularoon. Not to be confused with melon or Cameroon Mularoon. <laughs> All right, this next shot is looking a lot more Galaxy's Edge. And all the characters we've met can be seen in this one shot. We've got Fruit Samurai here, Green Monkeys, Green Rodian, Red Rodian, Blue Guards with no feathers, Mon Cala on the left. And then we meet this Duros who's wearing an eye patch. An eye patch, people! He's seen some stuff, or maybe he has it. <laughs> to the left of him, a woman is walking past with a vase balanced on her head. A few other things you might have missed. There are two red guards in the back, each with a staff. And they appear to be escorting this much larger creature up the the back. Is there someone in the basket thing on its back? Looks like it's carrying something somewhere. More drumming. Oh my gosh, Voldemort's cloned himself! Ah! Four-legged animal drinks from a river. This could literally be anything. There are dozens of four-legged animals in Star Wars. Probably another new one though. But it also looks similar to some of the Naboo horses you might have seen at some point. Also, a speeder bike whizzes by. It's really hard to make out the model of the speeder bike, but it looks similar to the 74Z speeder bikes used by the Empire many years later. Also, this rock formation immediately reminds me of the three sisters in my own backyard Australia mate wait wait uh, that didn't come out right also sun behind the rocks crescent moon in the sky are these the same sun and moon in the eclipse that burns the one's eye who knows guys Yoda has his own custom chair in the Jedi Council chambers just like we see later on what did he have to get this custom made did he commission a chair hey guys can you please make my chair different to everyone else and it's the only chair we see in this shot that's unique. There are none of those high-backed Jedi Council chairs, just the regular Mace Windu, Kieti Mundi, Obi-Wan chairs. So they're the ones they sit in. Outside the window... Oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Outside the window, Coruscant is absolutely thriving. Man, look at the amount of ships in the sky. And you recognize this one here? Yep, it's the AA-9 freighter. Same model as the one we saw earlier. One of these at the top looks like could also be a consular class cruiser, the first ship to ever be destroyed in the Star Wars cinematic timeline. Captain, look! <laughs> Oh, hey, look, we get a closer look at those red guards from earlier. They're wearing helmets. Not sure how they can see out of these things, to be honest. That'd be like watching this video like this. This here is a naked protocol droid. Cover your eyes. <laughs> here we have two Jedi likely training. I don't think they're actually fighting. But seriously, choosing a dangerous place to train, guys. Come on, one wrong step and you're gonna. You're gonna fall to your death. Also, notice the sunset behind them. A lot of suns in this trailer. You're noticing the theme here? Also, again, is this the same sun we saw before? It's the same sun from the eclipse. Is it all coming together? Now, this planet here, I've seen a bunch of you guys saying could be Kashyyyk. Or that's possible. Why not? But does Kashyyyk have a bunch of moons and another planet in the sky in such close proximity? My money's on this being a Yavin moon. Yavin 19. There you go. Why not? Also, same speeder as before flies past. How many Voldemorts are there? <laughs> Next shot, more speeders. And this time, we also see this building with a Y-shaped symbol. Very important because I think it's likely this is some organization or corporation that the speeders belong to and fight for. This here is a Nemoidian. This is impossible! Trade Federation, guys. Two Jedi about to fight a bunch of snow people who are holding blasters and instead of firing said blasters, decide to charge at the Jedi who are holding lightsabers. Guys, use the blasters! Keep your range advantage! Come on! This girl here, I think, is likely a Jedi you play as, maybe. Also, her headpiece reminds me of Amigas. Good old Bad Batch reference there. Army of aliens with the same symbol we saw before. See that? They have guns, tanks, same starfighters, and a sunset. Right, the starfighters are engaging in a space battle against a fleet of Trade Federation battle stations, otherwise known as Luka Hawks. Really cool getting to see these make a return from the Clone Wars era. And I think this gives us a good idea of what the story is going to be about. The organization with the Y symbol are in some kind of dispute with the Nemoidian Trade Federation guys. They're obviously, you know, fighting each other here, but, but then we also have the drum beating Voldemorts performing some kind of ritual to resurrect a mega Voldemort from Black Goo. It's like a solid game. 9 out of 10. Let's go. So did you guys notice anything I missed? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you're looking forward to this. Also, if you're new around here, I have a clips channel with daily clips and memes and uploads. You can come check that out. Come watch one of my other Star Wars gaming videos. Lots of them on the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord for the latest Star Wars gaming news and everything else. Thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.